Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a new Chromebook from Lenovo. This is their C330, and this is an all-in-one Chromebook, meaning you can uh, jump it around here into uh, display mode, or put it up on your desk in tent mode, or use it like a rather large tablet. Uh, so it's got a touch screen on board, but it is running Chrome OS, and we're going to explore more about what you can do with this device in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, this is the two-in-one that starts at $279. They have a laptop version with the same specifications, but without the wraparound screen that sells for $249. So if you don't need the two-in-one, uh, $250 will get you the same machine. Uh, you get four gigs of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage for that price. Both devices have a MediaTek 8173C processor built in. Uh, that is an ARM-based processor that we last saw on an Acer Chromebook about eight months ago, maybe a year ago now. Uh, very nicely performing chip, actually, especially compared to some of the Intel chips we typically see on these devices. And we'll look at how this one stacks up with the Acer Chromebook 11, which is very similar to this. And like that Acer Chromebook 11, this one has an IPS display, which is something we don't always see at this price point. Uh, so it's nice and bright and very crisp with very good viewing angles. And of course, this one being the two-in-one, you also get uh, some touch functionality with it too. And Chrome OS has been getting friendlier and friendlier for uh, touch input as they continue developing it. So that was nice to see on here. Really nice display for the price point. It weighs 2.6 pounds or 1.2 kilograms. So not all that heavy. The battery life on this one will probably get you anywhere from uh, eight to 10 hours, depending on what you're doing with it. Uh, more on the 10 hour side, if you were doing basic web browsing and email with the display brightness turned down, uh, but if you're taxing it harder with Android apps and that sort of thing, you'll probably be looking at uh, more around eight hours of overall battery life. Has a pretty decent wireless radio built in also, a 802.11ac 2x2 radio, along with Bluetooth 4.1. The keyboard and trackpad are very usable on this, like they are on most Google Chromebooks. Nice keyboard spacing here. Uh, not backlit, but it does have uh, decent travel to it. Very, very comfortable to type on. I didn't really have to get used to it at all. It was a very quick transition there. Uh, the trackpad here, which is very white, as you can see, uh, does function very well and very responsive, like I have seen on many other Chromebooks. There's a very consistent keyboard experience, because I think Google um, tells the manufacturers how to put these keyboards together. So it really feels very similar to other Chromebooks you may have used and overall a very nice experience. There are some ports on this one, of course, and the most notable one is the USB Type-C port here. Uh, this port will charge the laptop, but will also allow for data and video. So I was able to plug in a single cable here to a docking station we have over there. We're able to get the uh, unit here to output to a uh, 1440p monitor at 60 hertz, so that was good. I also plugged it into a 4K monitor. It was able to do 4K with a DisplayPort adapter, but only at uh, 30 frames per second. But nonetheless, to be able to get uh, that kind of display output with a single cable on a cheap laptop was a pretty good thing. So that was a nice surprise on there. And there's also a full-size HDMI port here on the side, so you can just plug in a monitor the old-fashioned way if you want. Uh, but just know that in my testing, it would only allow one or the other. So there's no dual display output on this. But if you are outputting to a second display, the laptop's internal display will work as well. Uh, you have a USB port here for plugging in keyboards and mice and that sort of thing, uh, but you only get one full-size USB port, but you could always get an adapter here for the USB Type-C uh, to give yourself a few extra ports if you need it. Uh, over here is a full-size SD card slot. As you can see, though, it will stick out of there quite a bit, so this is not a solution for an alternative storage medium for your laptop, unfortunately. So if you do need storage, you might want to go with the 64 gigabyte version that costs a little bit more. On the other side, you've got a Kensington lock slot here for locking it down on your desk. Your power button is here, volume rocker, and a headphone microphone jack over there for plugging in external audio. So let's take a look now and see how it performs. You'll see right now it is in laptop mode, but if I just uh, flip the screen around like so, it will move into tablet mode where 
every window becomes a full screen window. So as I switch around between the different things I'm looking at, you can see how that works. And what I'm going to do here is just pull up the on-screen keyboard. And one of the cool things they have on uh, the Chrome OS now for the tablet mode is you can actually use your handwriting, or a finger in this case, uh, to write out things that you would normally type in. So we're just going to go and visit nasa.gov. Uh, you'll see the display here is jumping around quite a bit. That's one of the things that you run into with lower cost laptops is that you will have a little bit of display bounce here when you're in either laptop or tablet mode. But you can see though how quickly things load up. Uh, this is due in part to the fact that we are running on AC wireless so we get uh, a fast connection to the internet through that capability there and also because the processor in here is actually pretty quick for an ARM-based chip. Things are really snappy and responsive as you can see here. I will also take a look at my YouTube channel. We've got a 60 frames per second video that we'll check out here in a second and see how well it can play back uh, some higher end video that you might stream across the web. So here we've got that video running at 60 frames per second, 1080p, and we're getting a couple of drop frames here and there as it's playing through. It's about a 12 minute video. I think we're about halfway through it at this point, and we've had about 40 drop frames or so. Typically we're seeing them when we are transitioning in between scenes. Uh, so it will struggle slightly on some of the higher end video. You'd probably see similar drop-offs on 4K files if you're playing them back. But generally, I think it should, it should be a pretty good web browsing experience. It is a pretty quick and responsive processor and noticeably faster than some of the low-end Intel chips that we sometimes see in Chromebooks at this price point. So I think you'll be uh, quite pleased with its overall performance with its uh, 8 to 10 hours of battery life as well. We also ran the browserbench.org speedometer test, and there we got a score of 47.5, which lines up exactly with the Chromebook R13 we looked at about a year ago with the same processor. And you can also see the version 2.0 of that test came in about the same. But take a look at the Acer Chromebook 11 we reviewed a little earlier this year that has an Intel chip at around this price point. Uh, you'll see that it doesn't do as well. That ARM processor in here uh, is just a better performing chip for this kind of activity. And it's really a matter of what they tune these chips to do. And for a Chromebook, this MediaTek chip is actually not bad for an entry-level device and outperforms the entry-level Intel chip that we have tested in prior reviews. Now, like most Chromebooks shipping today, this will support the Google Play Store. So if you have Android apps that you bought on your phone, you can run them on your Chromebook, and a lot of the casual games here do run pretty nicely. We've got uh, Crossy Road running here, and the uh, frame rate looks pretty good on it, and you can enjoy a lot of the games that you're already playing on your phone with a much larger screen. Uh, we're seeing it getting better and better each time they update the operating system. Uh, there are some issues still related to window sizing and that sort of thing, but generally it's gotten a lot better than it was last year, and I think you'll have a pretty good experience running all of the Android apps that you might already be running on a phone or tablet. And because it can run Android apps, it can also run Android video games emulators and I think the sweet spot for this one is probably the uh, Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 1 on backwards so the 90s 80s and 70s should all uh, be represented here on the device uh, the N64 emulator here is reporting at only about 20 frames per second this is Mupen 64 uh, but in playing, it actually feels a little smoother than that. So I think you're going to get uh, decent PS1 and N64 experiences here, along with some of the older game consoles as well. And it's a nice little add-on to, to be able to play some of that old stuff uh, on one of these Chromebooks. They've certainly gotten a lot more usable over the last couple of years. Now, the one thing you won't be able to do on this Chromebook is run Linux applications. There is a new Chrome OS feature that allows you to run Linux apps alongside all of your Chrome and Android stuff, but at the moment, this particular laptop and others powered with its processor are not compatible. So if you were looking for a cheap way to run those Linux applications, at least for now, this one is not it. And I don't believe this processor is going to be on the roadmap in the future either. So you can do Android and Chrome OS, but no Linux on here. But for the price point, I don't think it's too bad of a device here. It's definitely uh, not the most attractive thing in the world. You got an enormous bezel here at the bottom of the screen, but I like the fact that they're incorporating an IPS display at this price point, which is always good to see on a low cost device. I love the fact that they've got a fully functional USB type C port on it. And as we found with prior reviews, the MediaTek processor is really well suited uh, for web browsing and Android applications. And generally, most of what you throw at this thing should 
work just fine. I was hoping to run the 3D Mark benchmark that we run on all of our Android devices, but we couldn't get it to work on here, unfortunately. So I don't have a way of stacking it up against mobile phones and whatnot. But generally, most of the casual games you play should be fine. Most of the Android apps you will run on it should also be fine along with all of the web browsing you might do on it as well. And you get a pretty usable touch screen here. It's a little clunky as a tablet, but you can uh, use it as one if you choose. And uh, overall, it's a nice device here with a pretty functional uh, set of features that doesn't cost all that much money. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht. Too Much Sauce. Gerard Newberg. And Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.